Conservative critics say the budget cuts don't go far enough. We're also answering your money questions this morning, and we say good morning to Terry Savage, and we're going to start off with that debt ceiling debate. Terry, what's your hey, take Terry. on that? Good morning. Good morning. Well, you know, you would think the stock market would be cheering the prospects of a deal, but the Dow is actually down well over 200 points this morning for a couple of reasons. The first is uh, it's not a done deal yet. I have to wait and see what happens, uh, and there's still possibilities, of course, that the fringe elements could tear this apart. And the second real concern is, okay, you get a debt ceiling, the bills get paid, Social Security checks go out, um, Treasury bills get rolled over, that's great. What comes next? The Fed. And the Fed is still a bit on the warpath, saying we're still fighting inflation. A lot will depend on Friday's jobs reports. Are we seeing more unemployment, more evidence the economy is slowing? Fed people have been out speaking and saying, you know what, we can't really pause yet. Enough of them are saying that. So the market's worried about higher interest rates again. So we maybe solve one problem and we're right back to dealing with inflation. All right. Well, let's talk about student loan payments. Oh, well, this is really a critical part. Then nobody noticed this really of the debt ceiling deal. The debt ceiling deal says that the, the president cannot use any means to extend the moratorium on repayment. And there is, of course, no interest being charged now. So that means by August, on August 30th, uh, so around Labor Day weekend, you're going to have to start repaying your student loan debt. Now, some of you may be saying, but wait, wait, isn't the Supreme Court looking at a deal about loan forgiveness? Yes, that's still a possibility. The Supreme Court has not ruled on the plan for $10,000, even $20,000 worth of loan forgiveness, but that stands separately. If you have student loans outstanding, start saving some money now and plan to start your repayment. Now, they haven't said what the repayment terms will be, if there'll be a little bit of additional grace. We haven't heard the Supreme Court ruling on the loan forgiveness. And there might be some other mechanisms, but as part of this deal, do not look for this moratorium to be extended. Get to some viewer questions, Terry. The first one is, I am 59 years old and I have $30,000 in credit card debt. I own a house valued at $400,000 that is paid off. My yearly income is $80,000. Should, should I take out a home equity loan to pay off my debts? No. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> and no again. First rule, when you're in a deep hole, stop digging. Do not take out a home equity loan. First of all, you're probably be paying only interest and be left with a balloon payment down the road. Second of all, those rates can fluctuate. Um, I, we always, I wonder if you have the toll-free number for Consumer Credit Counseling Services, the 800-388-2227. It's always up at terrysavage.com. Well, let me take a second and give you the simple rule for paying down that credit card. Take this month's minimum payment, whatever it is, let's say it's $100, Double it, $200, and pay that same amount every month, $200 every month, not the new lower minimum doubled, but the same amount. Don't charge another penny. You can pay off the balance in less than three years. That's the way out of credit card debt. All right, here's another question. I purchased, or I thought I purchased, $15,000 in T-bills last Thursday for 13 weeks, but I still haven't seen it or taken out of my account. It was set up to happen at the end of July. How do I check? Well, first of all, you should go back to your treasurydirect.gov account. Instructions are at terrysavage.com. Takes a day or two for them to withdraw the money from your bank. They don't take all the money out. They leave the interest in your account. If it doesn't get taken out after a week, you know you probably forgot to uh, submit again on that very last screen. You can go ahead and enter a new order if it hasn't been taken out after a week. And by the way, six-month T-bills are now yielding 5.5%. There's been this concern about the debt rollover. So you should get about that if you buy next Monday at the regular auction on Monday. Okay, next question. Should we be buying gold and silver to protect retirement funds from the Biden administration? What percentage should we put into gold and silver? If so, how do we know who to trust with our funds? Whoa, I don't know how to tear that one apart. You're not protecting your uh, retirement funds from any particular administration. Gold has historically been sort of a hedge against inflation. It hasn't worked very well over the last couple of years. Uh, gold has bounced back now. It was over 2,000 ounce. It's now about $1,965 an ounce. And if you want to have in your IRA some gold, I recommend not going to those companies that say you can buy gold bullion in your IRA. You can just buy a gold mutual fund. There are a number of them. 
Fidelity, Vanguard, U.S. Global Investors, they all have gold sh uh, stock mutual funds. That's what you'd put, and a small amount. But you're not betting against the end of the world, because look, just a few days ago, we thought the world was ending and T-bills would default, and gold is still way down below 2,000. So it's not working out exactly as a hedge. Um, and I think the U.S. government's credibility will be restored if we can get this debt deal through. Ask Terry question. Go to terrysavage.com. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Time now for Ron Tom. Hey, Anna.